So you're studying for the SAT Math Level 2 Subject Test. You've come to the right place. I'm Dan from WeWillTeachYouMath.com. Guys, when you're using these videos to study, make sure you pause the video at the beginning when the problem first comes on the screen and try it on your own. Most of your practice should be done this way, actively and independently. Then, if after you try the problem on your own, you still find it tricky, that's when you watch the video explanation. In fact, you can use any resources that you have available to you to try to figure it out so that the next time a similar problem comes your way, you'll be ready. Enjoy, and thanks for watching. 50. A certain component of an electronic device has a probability of 0.1 of failing. If there are six such components in a circuit, what is the probability that at least one fails? Okay, so let's think about what they're really asking. They're saying that each component of this type has a 10% chance of failing. So probability of failure for a component is 10% or 0.1, right? What does that tell us about the probability that the component does not fail, that it actually works properly? It must be 1 minus the probability of failure, right? The probability of success is 1 minus the probability of failure, because it, it can only fail or succeed. There's no gray area. So 1 is the total probability, right? It only does one or the other. 10% chance of failure, 90% chance of success. Probability of success is 0.9. Don't know if we'll need that yet, but just want to have that, that uh, realization right away. There are six such components in the circuit. What's the probability that at least one fails? And these words are so important, at least one fails. So how many ways could that happen? That could mean that one fails, that two fail, that three fail, four, five, or all six. And it is possible, right? So that's a lot of different ways that this could happen. And then within the probability that one fails, which one, right? And then the same for all the other numbers. So there's a lot of combinations to account for here. A more clever way to get this done would be to say, what is the probability that none fail? Right? If we could say that the circuit as a whole either fails or not, the total, the total probability of the circuit as a whole failing plus the probability of the circuit as a whole succeeding has to equal 1. So we could say the probability of at least one fail equals one minus the probability of no failures. No failures. Does that make sense? And there's only one way that you could have no failures, right? They all have to succeed. So this is easier to compute than the probability of one failing plus the probability of two failing plus the probability of three failing and on and on and on. This is really easy. This is the probability of all six succeeding. So let's actually write it that way as well because that's the same thing. That's one minus the probability of all six succeed. If I had enough space, that would be great. And now we can compute that. 1 minus, what's the probability of success for one device? 90%, right? So, since they're all independent of events, right, the, the success or failure of a given component doesn't depend on the other components. They all individually have a 90% chance of succeeding, 10% chance of failing. So we'll just say 0.9 for success times 0.9 times 0.9 times 0.9 for six of them, or the short way is just to do 0.9 to the sixth. And you can put that in your calculator, and you will get 0.47 roughly. So B is the best choice. I think it's an interesting problem, too, because if you try to think about it intuitively at the beginning and predict what the answer is going to be, you might say, well, the probability, if there's only a 10% chance of them failing, yeah, there's six components, but you know, since it's only a 10% chance, the chances of the circuit as a whole failing seems like it would be relatively low. So you might look at C, D, or E as possible choices, but then you think, hey, wait a minute, D and E are super low, right? These are really small probabilities. At least this is 16%. That seems like it could be reasonable. 
And, but then what ends up happening is, even though the, fail, the probability of failure for an individual component is only 10%, because there are six of them, that's six different things that could fail. So it ends up being a pretty significant chance that one of them goes down. And the result of that analysis is that it's 47% chance that at least one fails. It's almost a 50, 50, 50 chance, right, that the whole thing goes down. So sort of a, a little bit of a surprising result there, but uh, helps you hone your intuition for the next example. Hi, thanks for watching. If anything's still confusing or you need a little extra help, drop me an email, leave a comment, or give me a call. I answer every message. And if you want to check out more videos like this, visit wewillteachyoumath.com. See you in the next video.